What's up, everybody? This is Shadow the Archangel, aka Style Brands, and I just wanted to come to everyone on the Sabbath and get into the Word of God uh, as far as it pertains to business and entrepreneurship and finances and things like that. Because a lot of times people think um, the Bible is just uh, spiritual mumbo jumbo that talks about faith and doesn't go into detail about ownership and owning your own business and being an entrepreneur uh, and things like that. But the Bible, you know, specifically calls a lot of us to be entrepreneurs and to get into different things that people need uh, because it is one of the greatest displays of faith to God. Uh, to depend on him to bless your land and to bless your crop and to bless your, your your flocks and your things like that that they used to depend on as far as like agricultural but you can translate that into uh, today's economy we have a lot of things that people need that we can fulfill beyond just dribbling a ball singing uh, rapping even though I do some of those things I also know how to provide services and skills that people need and products that people want and need. So I just wanted to go into it. Um, and also, you will have down periods. The Bible also talks about how to predict and prepare for that. And I just wanted to go into that on the Sabbath. And, you know, whoever watches it, watches it. And I appreciate all that come and you know give me an e-view so we're going to go into the bible today i'm going to go to several different um uh, passages and talk about different things and you can read it for yourself and i hope you do read it for yourself to empower you so let's just get into it with the first uh scripture this one uh is ecclesiastic ecclesiastes uh 2 and 26 said to be written by solomon in the latter years of his life uh, more cynical than uh, the Proverbs, uh, you know, told in a more cynical voice to, you know, display where he at w was at in his life. This was kind of just to give you a background. Solomon uh, went through a period of rebellion against God where he started worshiping other gods. And towards the end of his life, he renewed his relationship with God when he seen his kingdom falling apart. Um, and that's where he wrote Ecclesiastes, most of Ecclesiastes. So I wanted to read it because it gives you the, uh, he, they say he was the wisest king to ever live and ever will live. So this was the synopsis of what he's seen in his lifetime and his wisdom of, you know, the dis dynamics of working. So it, uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 2 and 26 says, for God giveth to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail, to gather and to heap up, that he may give to him that is good before God. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. So let's dissect this. So in Solomon's wisdom and living through his life, he's seen that leverage was given to those who had wisdom and knowledge that is good in the sight of God. Um, so when you yield to wisdom and knowledge, that sound instruction, right? When you, when you take it out of the parable of uh, just being good in God's sight, what being good in God's sight is to operate in sound wisdom, sound judgment, sound discernment, which means to practice the prudent uh, things that would make you successful, you know, hiring good people, creating leverage. And when it says in the passage, but to the sinner, he giveth travail, that's toil, that's uh, strenuous labor. That's you being the implementer in the warehouse. That's you being the attendant to the person that owns the business because they took a chance and they grew the business and now they hired you. So you make the person who is good in the sight of God, who practice wisdom and knowledge and uh, joy that he was given, 
you are the sinner uh, given to travail, travail. And I want you all to just really take stock in life and look at when you see people working real, real hard, they usually have some kind of deep vice, right? A lot of people that love to work, work really hard in manual labor, they have a vice. They either like to have a lot of sex, they like to, uh, well, let's say illicit sex, which is outside of marriage, or they drink too much, they're a drunkard, they're fueling a habit, they're fueling a drug habit, they overeat, they're gluttonous, they like to eat out they eat all the time, they don't like to uh, save money with, you know, just being prudent with that. Whenever you see someone in toil, they are always, quote unquote, some kind of sinner, which is they've given themselves over to a vice. And they usually work hard to gather and to heap up and to make someone else rich, which the person that had leverage is the person with the wisdom and the knowledge and the vision and the ambition to create the vehicle for the sinner, quote unquote, the person that may have a vice, the person that doesn't have a vision, the person that is complacent, the person that is afraid. And I'll show you uh, being afraid and inaction is also sinful um, and will lead you to feeling like there's no other way but just accept whatever money people give you. And, uh, and I don't want you to be discouraged if you have a business where you still needed help from people because that's also predicted and that's also in the bible about being uh, a time of lack uh, and you have to predict those things so i wanted to before i go into that verse about um you know burying their talons and predicting lack and all of that to just reinforce the fact that the bible wants you to do business so in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11, to give you some background about this, uh, this was said to be written to the uh, church in Thessal Thessalonia, or Thessalonia or something, I forgot the name, but it's said to be written by Paul. I just like to give you backgrounds of uh, who, who writ what and with the context and so you can understand, because um, I know people think the Bible is so confusing, um, but it's not. You just have to seek the kingdom and God will reveal it. So 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11, I'm going to read the King James. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. And this is Paul speaking to the church because even in that time, it was hard for Christians to work and have their faith. So we were called to work independently and support each other and, and establish businesses that helped one another. So one person would be a blacksmith. The other person would need the services of the blacksmith. One person would be the shepherd. The other person would be a cook. The other person would be this and that and they would fellowship and they would spend money with each other because then they had community and economic power that's why paul was writing to the people in the church so that they would know to create this economy so they could practice their faith because if you have a pagan hiring you the pagan is going to force you to practice their pagan practices so it was important for a fellowship or community of Christians to open up independent businesses to support each other. And this is why knowing the history and understanding the Bible is so important because if we knew these things as beyond just being spiritual mumbo jumbo, we would go in as Christians planning different businesses in our communities to fellowship and support each other so we can be independent and openly practice our faith speak against evil and not be afraid for someone to rip our livelihood from us so um, this is just something to think about and then I wanted to go into uh, another Proverbs 
uh, 27 and 23 through 24, which was also said to be written uh, some by Solomon, some by David, um, some by some unknown authors. Uh, but the Proverbs here says, be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. For riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. So this is in line with even though that you may have started a business, you may be independent, riches are not forever. And they do not endure through all generations. So you must be diligent to know the state of your business. My father had to literally swoop in to save my business when we lost our client abruptly because I was spending so aggressively to increase cash flow thinking that this client was going to be there forever, which was not wise. I wasn't diligent of the state of my flock. I didn't attend to my herd and I went all in on a product that I thought was going to be a game changer, but it just needed a lot more startup time. So this is also a very good proverb to pay attention to that you can't just be all in even though we are people of faith because the proverb teaches you be diligent to know the state of your flock and attend to your herds for riches are not forever nor does a crown endure to all generations so always be being attentive to your business even when you're operating in faith because you don't know you don't know and what I will want to piggyback off of that is uh, we'll go all the way back to Genesis 41 uh, where Joseph was speaking uh, to Pharaoh about the dream and Pharaoh was uh, just give you a background was having a dream that was plaguing him every night and that dream that was plaguing him every night ended up being a prediction of seven years of uh, good and plentiful abundance in their harvest. So you can look at it, look at it like seven years or plentiful in your business and then seven years of uh, lack and hardship that, you know, even if you're people of God, God must let the seasons remain as long as the earth is here. So that's also biblical that the seasons will remain. So I'm going to read from Genesis 41, starting on verse 25. It says, Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The lean, ugly cows that came up afterwards are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, this is verse 28, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming to the land of, uh, throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten, and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered, because the famine that follows, it will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is the matter has been firmly decided by God, and God will do it soon. And now... Let Pharaoh look for a discerning wise man and put him in charge of the land. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth. This is important. A fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. So I wanted to put this in reality, right? So we may have a business. We may be doing very well. But to operate like you're always going to be doing this well is not a matter of faith it's delusional because even joseph a man of god a man that god gave him powers 
had to still go through the seven years of famine with Pharaoh. And in the verse, it shows you that the years of abundance will be forgotten because the famine will ravage the land. That's the same thing in real life. You may be doing well now, but if you're not prepared for the famine, your family will forget that you were doing well. Your friends will forget that you're doing well. Your father will forget that you were doing well because the famine will ravage the land. And people can only think about what's happening to them right now. And I want to go back to verse 34 of of Genesis 30 of Genesis 41. It said, "Let a uh, uh, Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. You should be saving 20 percent of your income to prepare for famine. That's biblical, and I did not do this. I was spending everything." because I wanted to make back more. And it was working out like that. I would spend everything on a gamble, I would get back $15,000. I would spend everything on a gamble, I would get back seven. I would spend everything on a gamble, I would get back three. And then it just kept going and going and going. And then it got to a point I would spend everything on a gamble and get back $50. <laughs> But I didn't take the 20% of the seven years of abundance. So when the famine hit, it made everyone forget the seven years of abundance. That's what I experienced in my life. Everyone was telling me I needed to get it together, treating me like I was this failure, treating me like I was just this deadbeat because the land was ravaged. People did not remember the years of abundance at all. And this showed me that if I would have stuck to the biblical concepts of preparing myself for seven years of famine by taking a fifth of my harvest, which is 20%, I could have protected and rolled out the time that you go through in business in the kingdom which is abundance and lack their seasons no matter who you are I don't care all these people get on Facebook and act like they're constantly winning that is a lie because there are seasons there will always be as long as the earth remains seasons there will be abundance there will be lack so the lesson that Pharaoh learned was to always take 20% of your harvest and stash it away. Don't touch it. And I learned that now. And that's this Bible study for this Sabbath. Um, I hope this blesses you. I hope this helps you. I hope this gives you a greater insight into business. And uh, the word of God is real. I wish that you would take these biblical principles and apply it to your business and apply it to your life, even if you're broke right now. And then it, it can only be speculation. I would want you to hold on to it. And I'm going to leave you with this last verse uh, for the parable of talents, and then I'll close out and then we'll pray. And that's that'll be this Bible study for the Sabbath. Um, so and, and some people will say the Sabbath is, is abolished. Whatever you believe is what you believe. But I'm, I just want to do the Bible study. So I, I don't want to be heuristic. I don't want to argue with people about this. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll just close out with this after uh, we break it down. So this is in Matthews 25, 14 through 30. Uh, I'm reading the Revised Standard Version, Parables of the, of the Talons. For those of you who don't know, um, this was said to be authored by Matthew in the words of uh, Jesus uh, telling the parable of the talents, which is deeply rooted in, um, you know, you can look at it at on the layer of spiritual, but then you can also look at it on the layer of business. So let's go into it. For it, and this is starting at verse 14. For it will be as when man, uh, when a man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted, entrusted to them his property, to one he gave five talents, to another, two, 
to another one to each according to his ability he gave people the amount of money according to their skill then he went away he who received who he had received five talents went at once and traded with them he did investments he did stocks he did bonds he did crypto i'm i'm just giving sidelines and he made five talents more so also he who had two talents made two talents more but he who had the one went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money now after a long time the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them and he who had received the five talents came forward bringing five talents more saying master you delivered to me five talents here I have made five more his master said to him well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a little I will set you over much enter into the joy of your master and he also who had two talents came forward saying master you delivered to me two talents here I have made you two talents more his master said to him well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talents came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gather, gathering where you did not winnow. So I was afraid and went and hid your talent in in the ground here you have what is yours but his master answered him you wicked and slothful servant you knew that I reaped where I have not sown and gathered where I have not windowed though you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest so take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents for to everyone who has uh, has will more be given and he will have abundance but from him who has not even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless ser servant into the outer darkness there men will weep and gnash their teeth now see this is also spiritual I know um, it's also talking about the spiritual um, you know investments and, and things like that but this is also multi-layered and uh, multi-layered it can it could also apply to business if you look at it a lot of times when we don't have much we're afraid to invest we're afraid we're afraid to take risks because we feel like we only have a little to work with and a lot of times when you see the people who have a lot and they have more they're always investing even if you know it's a big risk you see a person invest 10 million dollars but they're worth 100 million and they're like okay of course they'll invest 10 million dollars they have 100 million but how did they get the 100 million they were unafraid to use their ability their skills to get more the people that feel like they only have a little ability in action is also sinful to God if you look at this parable parable is showing you that being afraid and t taking no action because you feel like you don't have a lot of skills is also sinful because when you go before God you did not profit nothing you did not gain anything you you, you merely existed and that's why when people come to me and they're, they're, they're still troubled over bills and they're afraid to take action over bills and over debt and over things like that, money is debt. You will never escape being in debt. But your inaction and being afraid to use your God-honoring ability to invest and make more is sinful.
We're not put on earth to merely exist and pay imaginary bills and eat food and one up our neighbor on Facebook. That's not what we're here for. We're here to invest and to grow our talents and to grow our ability and to do God honoring labor and to make God known in our actions. We will always be in debt. You will always owe somebody. You will always have a mountain to climb. You will always have a challenge to overcome. That should not make you afraid to take action. That's why this servant was wicked. He did not demonstrate the faith. He was managing someone else's money. That wasn't even his money. Because even if you fail, a righteous man falls seven times but get, gets back up. You have to be willing to fail and get back up. You have to be willing to take a chance and be wrong and let people shame you and do it again. You have to be, a, be encouraged and bold and let people tell you it's a dream, it's a vision, it's never coming true. And do it again and let God bless you because neither the water or the planterer is, is, planter or is anything, but it is God that gives the increase. Trust God. But you cannot be afraid to take action or you will be the wicked and slothful servant cast out into the darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. Family, I hope this Bible study helps you. I hope the power of God visits your life and your business's life, even if you're broke, even if you owe people, even if they see you owing them and you're trying to promote your business, promote it anyway. If they get on your comments talking about you, they owe you, you owe them money. Yes, I owe you money. I'm working to get it. So let me work, baby. I have to talk. I have to network. I have to promote. And even if I make money, I have to stay alive to give you the money. I can't give it all to you if I have everything that is yours and that's all mine. And I have to operate. I have to operate. So don't be afraid. It's only when you quit that it's over. I hope this blesses you. God bless and thank you for your time.